Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Stevie Matt, and today I'll be discussing Tom and Jerry. It hit HBO Max in 2021. It was directed by Tim Story and written by Kevin Costello. Welcome to It's Not That Deep. Hello, hello again. So, remember in that little video that I dropped on Twitter last week? You are following me on Twitter, right? If not, I'll give you a minute. Link down below if you need it. Now, in that video that you have now certainly watched, I said this. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't expect this movie to be particularly good. Probably not going to be the next Sonic or Detective Pikachu. So I'm here to say, with great pleasure, that I was extremely, very much, incorrect. This movie was right up there with the other grades. In fact, given that Detective Pikachu had that ending, I even placed Tom and Jerry just slightly above it. Again, on its own, I looked past it because, like, it's a Pokemon movie, and it was cute and fun and amazing regardless. But if I'm measuring by craft, I would say Sonic and Tom and Jerry, and then Detective Pikachu just slightly below them. Just slightly. Just because the writing was a little bit cleaner on both Sonic and now Tom and Jerry. You know, Detective Pikachu was the only one where I went in knowing it was a kid's movie and still that one part just had me like, eh. Here's what I mean. To start, I'm not about to sit here and tell you that it was like earth shattering material or anything like that, obviously. It's just a cash grab using a classic property to get the kids movie box office to bring in the money the studio needs to make the movies they actually give a shit about. And if you've ever worked in a movie theater, First of all, bless you, I send you love and solidarity, uh, but also you know how kids' movies pull in numbers. And are also hell to clean up after. I'm sorry, I love kids, but God, they are tornadoes in a movie theater. And families are just the worst at the concession stand. I'm sorry, y'all just are. I could go on forever about that, but I won't. Any hoopst. So I'm aware of what kind of movie I'm discussing here. I'm not that naive. Uh, but as a writer, I also just don't see anything as inherently below me either. You know, um, I'm not expecting it to be a meditation on the human condition or anything like that. But I can still check for some of the fundamentals, right? You know, a story is still a story regardless of who the target audience is. So I'm approaching it from that perspective. And on a fundamental level, the characters each have internal motivations and the different arcs are weaved together better than I would have anticipated. The reason I wasn't super feeling the trailer was because of all the humans. I was worried that the humans would take center stage and Tom and Jerry would just become props or something in a movie that's supposed to be about them. Because the movie very easily could have just been about Kayla scamming her way into this hotel job as she searches for something she's good at, with Tom and Jerry merely as plot devices whose fighting causes complications to that plot. What did you do? I mean, granted, these are characters that were created as just animated shorts that would play in a theater before a feature film as a kind of way to warm the audience up and such, and then they just kind of continue to exist as that, right? Silly little cartoons that you let play in the background or something. Although they did win seven Academy Awards for Best Animated Short Film and actually are matched with Walt Disney himself. But that's what they do. They fight. But when you are now making them the feature, it'd be pointless to then just make them plot devices because you don't know what else to do with them. So here they actually get some characterization. Nothing too deep or crazy, no deep dark backstory about why they're always beefed out or anything, nothing overdone, but just enough of a foundation to build their own feature film around. Tom is introduced as coming to New York with aspirations to be a piano player, even hoping to play alongside, lol, John Legend. And then Jerry is simply in the market for a new place and ain't finding nothing that fits his fancy. And we see later why that is. Because Jerry A. Mouse, Jerome Anthony Mouse-Williams, is a sophisticated Negro. Like, look at this apartment, honey. So that's how they end up here at this hotel, just when our lead human character Kayla has finagled her way into a job that she may just be a little unqualified for. Just a smidge. And by finagle, I mean scammed. Total scammer. Messy boots. So right off the bat, even our animated friends have a little motive, just enough to drive the plot forward, as well as our human protagonist, and their arcs are all weaved together rather nicely. Now I know, I know. Stevie, it's just a kid's movie. You might even say, it's not that deep. 
Speaking of, have you hit that subscribe button yet? If not, you totally should. Why I bring it up is because even in very serious, sophisticated, adult-oriented stories written for mature audiences to be considered as art of the highest brow, you'll still run into this problem where characters are less so characters and more so plot devices. The sidekick, the female love interest, the villain even, hell, sometimes even the protagonist, I've seen that happen before, it all happens a lot. Hell, The Godfather. Classic film, literally number two on American Film Institute's top 100 greatest movies of all time list, and Michael Corleone's wife is no more developed than a lamp in his father's office. She's literally there just to be his escape from the mob life that he doesn't want, and she dies so that he has a reason to go back home. Plot device. And don't even get me started on Diane Keaton's poor character. So yes, it absolutely is the bare minimum, but it's also a failure more often than it should be. So when I see it in places that I wouldn't expect it, like a kid's movie cash grab on a classic property, it stands out. Character is very important to me and I don't care where or what it is when I see it, I'm happy about it. All right, so you know the color purple. Everybody should know Friday. I talked about Eve's Bayou in an earlier video. And if you've never seen a John Singleton movie beyond his Fast and Furious movies, this channel might not even be for you to be honest. But now, make way for Tom and Jerry. It's very clear that Warner Brothers decided to release this movie during Black History Month because this right here is a black film. Don't at me. Or do at me. Let's fight about it. It gives me engagement metrics. <laughs> so the movie starts off with these animated birds rapping a Tribe Called Quest song. And at first I was like, oh okay, so it's gonna be some white dude using hip hop to seem cool and hip and trendy. Ugh. But whatever. Hopefully it's not too bad. Then the movie progressed, more music played, and then it started seeming more and more, dare I say, legit? Then this happened. Listen here, punk. When I got a check. <laughs> <laughs> First off, LOL at him slamming the door in her face like that. He said, you got one time to be calling me out my name, Miss Mama. But Jodeci? And then later, Jagged Edges, Let's Get Married? Like, okay, I think white people actually know that song, so on its own it might not have tipped me off, but here at this point, it tipped me over the edge, and that's when I had to look it up, and that's when I realized who the director was. Yes, I paused the movie to do so. This is why I insist on watching movies alone, because I am insufferable. Like, the name was kind of familiar, but I had just never made the connection before. But Tim Story? This is the guy that directed Barbershop. I'm being silly about Tom and Jerry, of course, but Barbershop? That's legit. And that made so many choices in this movie make so much more sense and I was screaming. <laughs> Again, it was the music that tipped me off and then you look at the soundtrack and you've got Eric B and Rakim, Jodeci, Jagged Edge, A Tribe Called Quest, and then Rick Dam Ross on the ending credit song. But my, my, my Maybach music. You think they'll still copyright me for doing that? And then you've got like the voices of the Alley Cats and hell, Tom's own internal monologue is voiced by Lil Rail. And it really just felt like, and this is me totally speculating just for the fun of it, that Warner Brothers gave this movie the story without much oversight because it was probably just seen as a throwaway film while they focus on things like, I don't know, getting the mess that is the DCEU together. And the story was like, oh wait, I can do what I want? I bet. And he put Rick Ross on the damn ending credit song of a Tom and Jerry movie. <laughs> And again, as silly as I'm being, this isn't unprecedented for Tom and Jerry, if I'm being honest. If you're a real fan of Tom and Jerry, you already know about Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby. Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby. Exactly. So Tom always been a uh, <clears throat> a distinguished feline of color. And as expected, they make a callback to that in the movie as well. This time voiced by none other than T-Pain, Teddy Payne on that thing, auto-tune and all, but it is a Ray Charles song, so it's a modern twist, but still the right energy. So look, we already got Bebe's Kids, we got a Goofy movie, and now Tom and Jerry, starring Thomas Devante Cat Dash Jackson and Jerome Anthony Mouse Dash Williams, will now be considered part of the African American animated film canon. Now there is a conversation to be had about what does actually count and doesn't count as a black film, like what the official criteria is. 
but not here. Not on a video about Tom and Jerry. Please just let me have my fun. <laughs> my only thing about that, and this is me being completely earnest here, is that I just wish we'd gotten a black girl in the lead. Like, again, total speculation on my part that that was the studio's decision. You know, I know, gotta have a white girl for universal appeal or something, blah, blah, blah. But just imagine if they had gone all the way and just cast a young black girl in the lead instead. I was gonna say Kiki Palmer, cause she's silly as all hell. But all right, let's say the studio was going for a specific age range and she's just slightly above that. I mean, she's not old by any means. She's 27, she's still a baby. But all right, let's say for argument's sake that that's a young professional age and not like the entry level, fresh out of college or whatever, still trying to figure out what you're doing with your life age that we get with Kayla here. So you know who else would have been a good choice? Coco Jones. She's 23, so just a year younger than Moretz. Uh, she was in Vampires vs. the Bronx, and she was lovely with the little bit that she was given in that movie. Uh, she's done some Disney stuff, so she, I'm sure she could have carried this. Absolutely. And Moretz is just fine. Absolutely no shade to her either. Um, it's just, if we were going to be getting a, you know, Black African American masterpiece of animated cinema, I would have liked to see a black girl get to lead it. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm done messing with y'all. <laughs> I really just sat in front of this camera and played in your damn face for like 10 minutes, waxing poetic about a damn Tom and Jerry movie. I'm so sorry. But also, I'm not sorry, because I had a blast. And that's all I got for you today. I clearly had so much fun with this movie. And it was, yeah, it was obviously a total nostalgia watch for me, but you know, they updated the animation so beautifully, and it really felt like it honored the spirit of the original cartoons. And it was just a cute and charming and exciting entry into the black film canon. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button to show some love. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss another one. Check me out on Twitter and Coffee for more ways to stay up to date and show support. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you in the next video.